just stomp you out huh. Came with all my goons, we gon' thug it out Go hit bust and move, we gon' stomp you out The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros are the announcement of the pay-per-view buys for the Charlos. This is Boxing News 24. Charlo Twins doubleheader expected to generate 100,000-plus pay-per-view buys. Uh, here's the article. Last Saturday, Showtime's doubleheader featuring Jamal and Jamel Charlo is expected to bring in only 100,000 to 120,000 pay-per-view buys. Mike Carpenter and Yahoo News at 120K buys for the Charlo Brothers pay-per-view card are dismal numbers. The Showtime organizers should have realized that it was too soon for the Charlo Brothers to be on pay-per-view. Neither of them have ever fought any big names during their respective 12-year careers. They look poor in their uh, record fights against Matt Korbov and Tony Harrison. Uh, the Charlo Twins doubleheader competed with UFC 253 uh, and the NBA Conference Finals. So, dollar bill. <laughs> uh, the reported numbers for the Charlos are between 100 and 120,000 pay-per-view buys. What are your thoughts on that? Listen, I don't even believe that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> look, 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 I didn't hear nobody talk about the fight before the fight, during the fight, or even after. There was even a selective few. But then you, have, you wasn't hearing people talk about it like crazy. I still don't even believe that. Look, you telling me that they, they did 100,000? All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? JFK was killed with a magic bullet. Uh, Malik Scott didn't take a dive. And Santa Claus... All the kids leave the room now. Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> I just want to say on uh, the JFK comment, the views and opinions of Trill do not reflect the boxing girls or the other faces you see on the screen. All right, go ahead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't believe it happened. You know what I'm saying? But, and that's a big but, big old, big old but, Ow, a badunk a dunk. There's 6,997,384 people in Houston, Texas. So there's a possibility that they could have got 100,000 people or 120,000 people to order that fight with a population that is going to exceed, that they think is going to exceed to be 7.1 million in 2020. <laughs> I'm guessing that maybe they could have got 120,000. Bill is wearing a lot of hats. He's the census now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my bag today. Don't even worry about my bag. You see my eyes open. Hey, take this. <laughs> take this. Bill, Bill is doing a lot of things. He's saying it. He's <laughs> that's what's up. That's good information, bro. Shout out. That's, that's what's up. You know, uh, when you think of it, it's kind of like that's that makes it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> if that's a you got six million people where you live, <laughs> and only get, uh, and it only it's going to be seven point one million people in Houston, and you only got one hundred and twenty. Hey, I can see it happening. <laughs> it, 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 I guess it is what it is. Oh, um, Ned. <laughs> What can I say? But I told you, I told you they were gonna do these numbers. Well, this is this is a stretch. Plus, we all predicted they were gonna be around these numbers. <laughs> this is a stretch. <laughs> like, like, oh, five hundred thousand. <laughs> this is a stretch. This is just a cover up that they ain't even gonna make a hundred k. I doubt they even made a hundred. Oh, um, there was a hundred thousand buyers for this fight. So just just for that, like I. I I, I'm just, I'm just like they, they're covering a lot of things up, and that no, those are the stretch. The waters, it, um, the Charlos flopped, and it's the it, we we saw it come. We saw the train wreck happen before it it, it hit the it hit the station, you know. So 
That's it for me. <laughs> so I'll, I I don't want to question the validity and the numbers, although there is some skepticism on my part uh, that maybe those numbers aren't accurate. I won't question the validity of those numbers only because even taking those numbers at face value, they're still not impressive. Um, so I don't want to necessarily beat a dead horse by pointing out, although these numbers aren't impressive, they may not even be factual. I, I just think <laughs> <laughs> like, it is what it is, right? I'm not, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I, these numbers aren't impressive. These numbers are on par with TC fighting uh, Amir Khan, by, by the way. So I guess they should make $5 million per fight if you believe that contract as well, which is pie in the sky. But anyways, let's get back to this. Um, so... They sell 100,000, 120,000. That's a low end. That's a low amount. And for me, this is where Bob Arum made great decisions for um, Vasily Lomachenko and Teofimo Lopez and for Kell Brook and Terrence Crawford in the upcoming fights, just putting it on ESPN. It would have done more of a service for the Charlos to have these fights on Showtime or to have had these fights on Fox. And the reason being is probably upwards of a million people would have saw Jamal Charlo put on a beautiful boxing performance against a tough opponent, Sergei Derevianchenko, an opponent who many people believe beat Triple G. If he would have done that in front of an audience of a million plus, I, I have to believe if you put this fight on Fox, if you put this fight on Showtime pay-per-view, over a million people would have watched it. For just what it, for people who have Showtime, they would have tuned in. For the, If you put it on regular TV, I believe people would have tuned in. Um, and you would have had over a million people watch this fight. And the performance Jamal Charlo put on against Sergei Derevianchenko would have made him a star. Jamal Charlo the performance he put on against Jason Rosario, if a million people saw that, would have made him a superstar. And then you could have sold him on pay-per-view in the next fight. But the, but the bottom line is you put him on pay-per-view, you charge $75, which was too much, and only, quotation marks, only... 120,000 people saw those brilliant performances by the Charlos. And you re-ran it yesterday, and I don't know how many people watched that, but it's not the same when it's a delay and it's a week later. Everybody already knows the results. If you were to put this on regular Showtime or Fox, they probably would be primed for pay-per-view in their next fight. But because you got greedy and you put them on pay-per-view too soon, they're pay-per-view worthy performances weren't seen by the masses and now they're back at square one again like Terrence Crawford when he tried to go on pay-per-view too soon he fought Amir Khan in front of a hundred thousand people didn't impress nobody and now his next big fight is going right back on ESPN right the Charlos will be right back on Showtime in their next fight because they try to go pay-per-view too soon now the Bob Arum route with Vasily Lomachenko and Timo Fiuma Lopez, I think, is the way to go. The winner of this fight, millions of people are going to watch. I anticipate this fight being viewed by over 2 million people. This is a fight for the ages, and we're going to get into this uh, in another segment. But I anticipate the winner of that fight becoming a pay-per-view star. Terrence Crawford versus Kell Brook on ESPN is a brilliant decision. Why? Because his pay-per-view numbers in his last fight was abysmal, right? People talking about he makes $5 million per fight. When did he sign that contract? Right? Um, so now he's fighting Kell Brook on ESPN. Why is he fighting Kell Brook on ESPN? Because he's not a pay-per-view attraction. If he was a pay-per-view attraction, he'd be fighting him on pay-per-view. So Floyd Mayweather pay-per-view attraction, fought Andre Berto in his last fight against a boxer and still did over 300,000 pay-per-view buys. And everybody was not interested in that fight. Still did better than what these guys are doing today. 
fought the Ghost Guerrero, fought guys who weren't necessarily the biggest names in sold on pay-per-view. And here you have Terrence Crawford fighting Kell Brook on ESPN. You know what it is? <clears throat> I broke it down. I figured out what it was with the article on the Charlos. They, it was a misprint. They misspoke, my brother. They meant to say, instead of buys, instead of saying 120 buys, they meant to say $120,000. <laughs> think about it. Just think about it. <clears throat> 1,600 people watched this fight. 75 times 1,600, it's 120,000. I'm walking with you, Trev. I'm walking with you. You're walking you, with you me. You just need these, and then you can be conspiracy. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it was. They misspoke. It wasn't 120 buys. It was $120,000. And then 75 times 1,600 comes to 120,000. Yo, bro, I don't even, that's why I'm saying to you, I don't think it's that impressive. Like, even <laughs> if you take the actual numbers, $75 and you times 120,000, it's not going to really be that impressive. Even when, and then especially when you divide it by two. Yeah, that's why I said. <laughs> so, um, it's, so that's why I said, I agree that it's sketchy um, to say that they sold that much, but I'm not even going to question the numbers because it's not impressive as is. It's like when Deontay Wilder fought Luis Ortiz and, like, G and Complex were celebrating, like, the people saying the numbers were, like, 100,000 or 150,000. And I'm like, you know that's bad. <laughs> and you're still trying to defend it because, like, you know, it's, it's your guy, but you, you know it's bad. Those numbers are not – impressive but my my thing is they never should have been doing it on on a pay-per-view and in fact they put on brilliant performances that would have been more beneficial to their career had they done it on showtime had they done it on regular tv because then their next fight would really be pay-per-view worthy but now instead they're gonna have to do their next fight on regular tv anyway so it's counterproductive so um, and not to not not to shoot them in the foot. They're not the first to think they were pay-per-view worthy when they weren't. We have the great Terrence Crawford, whose fans are are, are only the only person who has worse fans than Terrence Crawford is Deontay Wilder. Although since Deontay Wilder got exposed, TC fans are creeping up there. It may be time to drop the atomic bomb on them. It may be time, but um, you know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> this guy thought he Don't was do it. Please don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so that bomb comes. <laughs> so, so you know, um, this guy thought he was ready for pay per view TC fighting a man con and found out nope, it's back to basic cable. You go because you are a basic cable fighter, and so um, now he's gonna fight. And it will do if he can beat Kell Brook in impressive fashion, it will catapult him into being a pay-per-view star. So I, I like the approach that Bob Aram's going with his next two fights, which is I want more eyes on this fight than trying to rob the public for money because it'll work wonders for the winner of Teofimo Lopez versus Vasily Lomachenko, and it will help Terrence Crawford if he looks impressive against Kell Brook. But if he doesn't look impressive against Kell Brook, <laughs> see you on basic cable in your next fight. So... Um, that is what it is for me. <laughs> Let us know how you feel about this. Please check us out on Instagram and Twitter. Also check out our podcast on all major streaming services. We are the MFBB. 75 times 1,600. <laughs> <laughs> Catch me creeping down the dark street. This is where it means the zombies meet. Guarantee we all gonna eat A zombie red again with HD I'm a zombie in the night, you better run from me Zombie red in the house, you better run, homie Brought a mask and some gloves with some thugs with me I came to do damage, you wanna purge with me Super Saiyan zombie, I be